Hey everybody, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. If you're new around here, my name is Nathaniel Dodds and we're doing things a little differently here. I'm experimenting with a couple different ways of doing some tutorials. Uh, and just as I make my change up, Adobe releases Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. So this video might be a couple days later than most of everybody else's uh, reviews of the new features of Photoshop. Uh, but without further ado, let's jump into it. And I want to share with you the five best features or my fav five favorite features here in about five minutes, excluding new content aware fill, because that's like its whole own thing. I'll probably have a video coming on that in and of itself at some point in the future. All right, let's jump into Photoshop. Let's check this thing out. Okay, so here we've got the first thing, and that would be multiple undos. So it seems a very, very clear cut that we should just be able to hit Command or Control Z multiple times to undo. Never were able to do that before. You always had to undo once and then use a separate hotkey to step backward through history states. Now undo just steps backward through as many history states as you have. All the other Adobe apps have kind of functioned like this kind of for a while now. So it's about time Photoshop does it. It's a little bit different. I'm still getting used to it. I'll be honest with you about that. But I think as soon as I get used to it, I'll really, really enjoy it and be happy that it's there. I actually do really enjoy it now, but sometimes I still go and, you know, step backward. Whoop, why isn't undoing? Ah, that's why. Because it's finally been made right. So I'm happy about the multiple undos. Now, the second thing here is live blend mode previews. No longer do you have to click through or use the hotkey to quickly shift through all of your different blend modes. When you drop down the blend mode menu, and you hover over a blend mode, it'll automatically apply it to the layer so you can see what it looks like and quickly scroll through and pick the perfect blend mode each and every time because you know as well as I do, no matter how much you research blend modes, you still just kind of have to see it to believe it and know what's going on when it comes to your blend modes. All right, the third thing is the frame tool. So the frame tool looks like a feature kind of stolen right out of Adobe XD. For those of you that use XD, amazing application. Photoshop's still one of my favorites, but XD is cool. This was a really great feature in XD. I'm so glad they have it in Photoshop. Basically, you can create a shape, a rectangle, square, or circle, and once it's there in place in your document, you can simply drag an image from outside of Photoshop and drop it right on that frame, and the image will be resized and masked to fit right within that frame. You can edit and transform the image within the frame. You can transform or change the size of the frame, uh, or you can edit and transform both at the same time. So it's a really versatile, very, very uh, useful feature that's been added to Photoshop. I'm so glad to see this in there. It's useful for so many things other than like website and magazine page layouts. It's so useful for so many different things. Super, 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 super glad to see the frame tool in Photoshop. All right, so the fourth little update is now when you transform either pixel-based layers or text layers, uh, you will automatically free transform them proportionally. So no longer do you have to hold down shift while dragging. That's nice. It's a little time-saving feature. Um, it is only with pixel-based and text layers. I'm not quite sure why Photoshop didn't do it with all, just basically all layers, even vector layers and things like that. I'm not really sure. Maybe there's some reason and the people at Adobe are probably smarter than I am. So I'm assuming they have uh, something that they've concocted or come up with. Doesn't really make sense to me. I feel like it should be across the board because I'll be honest, it feels a little buggy when you go from just clicking and dragging to all of a sudden you're on a, a vector layer and you click and drag and it's all over the place and suddenly not in proportion anymore. So I, I don't know. I kind of wish it was everything. It's really cool though. It's just nice to be able to grab something and scale it and, you know, basically every time you transform something, you want it to remain proportional. Um, so it's nice that that's the default instead of the sort of the exception and we have to add a hotkey. All right, the fifth favorite feature I have is something called auto commit. I've actually seen some people complaining about auto commit. I think it's pretty cool. I've liked it so far. Uh, basically when you're free transforming or you drag a new image into Photoshop or you make a text change, you can just click out away from that object outside of the transform handles or whatever and it'll automatically commit the changes and deselect the object. So there's no more, you know, having to double tap the return or enter key or go up and hit the little check icon. Just click out away from it anywhere and you're good to go. It's really fast, really easy. Again, it's something you need to get used to. It's a change in Photoshop, uh, but it's uh, I think it's kind of a nice change. I think it's pretty cool. The crop tool also is another tool that has auto uh, commit. So that's really cool. And before I let you go, I think I'll do a sixth. I think I'll do my sixth favorite feature. And this actually might be my absolute favorite. I don't know why I'm saving it for sixth. The ability to now do mathematical equations, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, the whole bit. It's so nice to be able to do this 
in input fields in Photoshop as well. So if you have an object that's 100 pixels wide, you can just say 100 pixels and add an asterisk to, to multiply times four, and it'll automatically update that. It's so great. I love this feature in um, Adobe Illustrator. I use it all the time. And I'm so glad they now have it in Photoshop. I absolutely love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So there you have it, my five, five, six favorite new features of Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. I hope you've updated it. I hope you've downloaded the update and checked it out, had some fun with it. And also hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit that little like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss any other Photoshop or other graphic design related tutorials in the future. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Why am I giving you so many things to do? I don't know. But for all these new features in Photoshop, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.